Hello guys, so yeah, today we are back again with a problem and this is actually a really interesting problem and we have some beautiful symmetry involved in this uh, number theory algebra Daffington equations. So yeah, I'm sure you'll enjoy it and let's get into it. So this is the first problem from the European Girls Mathematical Olympiad in 2019. And in this video, we're going to be learning about some problem solving strategies when it comes to Daffington equations. Uh, we are we are going to have some book suggestions for number theory and senior Olympia, so EGMO, APMO, IMO, etc. And uh, at the end, we have a similar but challenging problem. And yeah, we also will learn a very important concept of symmetry over here, which is especially important when it comes to uh, you know number theory algebra problems. Symmetry is actually really beautiful, and more often than not, it makes our life simple. So yeah, let's see how it works out. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010. Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in Mathematical Olympiads, Physics Olympiads, Computer Science and Informatics Olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Great, so this is this question. Find all triplets ABC of real numbers such that it satisfies these two given equations, right? So first they have given us AB plus BC plus AC is equal to 1 and number 2 we have A square B plus C is equal to B square C plus A is equal to C square A plus B. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this first equation into the second one and the way I will do that is I'll consider this C as C times 1, I'll consider this A as A times 1 and I'll consider this B as B times 1. And for the sake of simplicity, let's just first analyze these two these two equations. You can pick any combination of these three, but uh, I'll take these two just for simplicity's sake. Right? So we have a square b plus c times ab plus bc plus ac, which is nothing but 1, is equal to b square c plus a times ab plus bc plus ac. So now that we have done that, now I'm just going to expand this. So I'll get a square b plus abc plus bc squared, this is b, okay, plus ac squared is equal to b squared c plus a squared b plus abc plus a squared c. And we can actually see that certain terms cancel out. So this a squared b gets cancelled out, abc also gets cancelled out. And after that, we have a really simple expression that can actually be factorized, you know. So factorized is again one of the techniques that helps us a lot to kind of simplify the cases. So we will get this. And if I just take uh, maybe like c square common on the left hand side, I will get a plus b over here and over here I will get um, a square plus b square. And uh, once we have done that, we can just take like c to the left hand side and then I will get c times a plus b minus a square plus b square is equal to 0. So now that we have that, we can just split it up into two cases. So case 1 would obviously be the case where c is equal to 0. And uh, if c is equal to 0, if you actually notice, they had given us certain equations, right? So ab plus bc plus ac is equal to 1. If you put c is equal to 0, you get ab is equal to 1. And also, we had this uh, b square c plus a is equal to c square a plus b. Again, you put c is equal to 0 over here, you get a is equal to b. So a is equal to b, ab is equal to 1. So both of them can either be 1, 1, or both of them are going to be minus 1, minus 1. Right, because A, B, C are reals, they are not integers. They are not natural numbers, I mean, they are integers, of course. So uh, the, the solution set that we have for this case is 1, 1, 0 and minus 1, minus 1, 0. Also, now this, this, now this is where kind of the main important things come here and its permutations. Right? So this is actually a very important thing to understand. So what, what I'm trying to illustrate is that 0, 1, 1 is also a solution. Why I say that? Because this expression is symmetric, right? AB plus BC plus AC is equal to 1. And even the second equation that was given, A square B plus C is equal to B square C plus A is equal to C square A plus B. These equations are essentially symmetric. So for example, over here, if you just swap A with B or B with C and C with A, essentially end up with the same equation right so you also need to consider the permutations and another reason why you need to consider these permutations is if you actually see over here i took these two equations you can potentially also take these two equations and then you can take this first and the third equation as well 
So if you actually figure out all of these uh, cases, uh, all of these equations, you'll actually see that the solution that you will get will just be a permutation of these two, these two solutions. So that is why because of the symmetry and because of the fact that we have multiple equations and we just chose any two of them, we have to consider the permutations and you can really check that as well, that this is a solution. Also, uh, 1, 0, 1 is also be a solution. Similar, similar case for this as well. So that was the uh, analysis of the first case. Now let's move on to case 2. So if you remember, case 1 was c is equal to 0. Now in case 2, let's just consider none of them are 0. Right? So we essentially had uh, c times a plus b minus a square plus b square is equal to 0. So that means that c times a plus b is equal to a square plus b square. Now again, again, I'm going to use the fact that the equations given to us are symmetric. So that essentially means that a times b plus c will also be equal to b square plus c square and b times a plus c will also be equal to c square plus a square. Well, that's, that's, that's really good because again, just to reiterate why that is happening is because we had taken these two equations. If you take these two equations, you would get the second equation that I had written down below. If you get these two equations, you'll get the third equation that I had written down below. So that is why actually all of these three equations are valid due to symmetry. And that is why you know, observing the symmetry is really important in this question. Now what do we do? Well, we just add these uh, three equations. So on the left hand side, you get twice of AB plus BC plus AC. And on the right hand side, you get twice of A squared plus B squared plus C squared. And just cancel two from both sides. This is just one. So you will get a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to 1. Well, that's great. So we kind of reach a simplification. Uh, but now what we can also do is let me just rewrite the equations. This is a squared plus b squared. Then we have all of these are essentially symmetric if, you, if you've noticed. I'm sorry, it should be this. Okay, perfect. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, let's just again add these two equations and see what we get. So AB plus BC plus AC is equal to twice of A squared plus B squared plus C squared. And uh, if I just send this to the other side, I'll get A squared plus B squared plus C squared minus AB minus BC minus AC is equal to zero. And this actually is a very famous factorization. I'm sure you've seen it. It is A minus B whole squared plus B minus C whole squared plus C minus A whole squared. And obviously the two in the denominator is equal to zero. So this and this cancels out. So that leaves us with the sum of three squares, which is zero. And uh, we've seen this multiple times and this can only mean that each of these quantities is zero, right? So that means A is equal to B, B is equal to C and C is equal to A. So therefore, A is equal to B is equal to C for this uh, case. Now, now because A is equal to B is equal to C and A squared plus B squared plus C squared is equal to one, we substitute this back in and we get three A squared is equal to one. Therefore, a is equal to b is equal to c is equal to plus of minus 1 by root 3. So again, so the really the solutions are 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3, and minus 1 by root 3, minus 1 by root 3, minus 1 by root 3. Obviously, over here, all of the three, all three are equal. So you can't say that one of them will be 1 by root 3 and the other will be minus 1 by root 3, let's say. But no, all of them are equal. So yeah, those were the solutions, these two, the above two, and their permutations, of course. This is, uh, this is never to forget. So yeah, that was the problem number one. It's usually one of the easier problems of the test, but uh, I hope you learned some good lessons in symmetry over there. Okay, so coming on to certain book suggestions in number theory, we have uh, Elementary Number Theory by David Burton, Elementary Number Theory by S. Pinsky, and you can also follow the IMO Compendium for more number theory problems. And um, yeah, we have uh, not exactly a continuation of the problem, but we are using a similar idea essentially over here as well. I want you to find the number of ordered pairs a comma b satisfying the following equation. And it is given that the greatest common divisor or the highest common factor HCF of a and b is one. That essentially means a comma b are co-prime, right? They are co-prime, uh, they are co-prime um, integers, right? The co prime integers and they satisfy this given equation. So just find out the number of ordered pairs a comma b. And uh, yeah, if you make any progress on that question or if you're able to solve it, please let me know in the comment section and I'll definitely help you out. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized with one on one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by 
mathematicians and real Olympiads. From leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta. From Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.